What's going on? Move the Mouse here back in City Skylines with another episode of map making, getting ready for the town of Portsmouth, which will be the Let's Play Season 7 coming out in about a week or so. For this one, I've been building a map from the ground up, and in the previous episodes, we built the actual landscape and then dropped in some of the road infrastructure in the form of incoming and outgoing highway connections. But now it's time to make that map come alive with resources. Now I am adding a little bit of ore and oil in today's episode, and there will be a bit of farmland as well, but none of those are really the focus of the area of Portsmouth. If we were going to use one of the built-in industries in the game, forestry would definitely be the specialization that you'd want to go with in this area. And what I'm doing with the trees is I'm using primarily conifers. There's wild conifers and conifer number one and two, and I'm kind of spreading those around the map in pockets. One thing that I'm doing is if you're not familiar with the area is I'm kind of leaving trees away from where the major population centers are. So chances are if you see trees, there's not a lot of people living there. If you see an empty patch of land, that's a great spot to build a little town and stay true to the area of Portsmouth. Now we're not doing a one-to-one -one recreation of the area. We did import the height map and the highways in the area are relatively realistic in terms of their actual real life placement. But other than that, we're not trying to stay too true to the area. We're just trying to have some fun with it. But I wanted to kind of start to decorate and again, define where people are and aren't and place trees where they aren't. So if forestry is your thing, there will definitely be no shortage of trees on this map, primarily conifers. But once I've gone in and placed these throughout the entire map, I'll also use a really light brush to fill in some other types of trees in the form of oaks and beeches and other things. When you want to paint trees onto the map, you have a couple selections in the form of brush size, the overall size of what you're painting with. The strength determines how fast it's going to populate that area with trees when you click the button down. And then there's different brush shapes you can choose from to kind of make the patterns that you're painting a little bit less mechanical and a little bit more random. If you mix a bunch of these different techniques together using different trees with different brush sizes, brush strengths, and brush shapes, you'll be able to fill up the map in no time. One thing to keep in mind though is you have a limit of 250,000 trees on the entire map. So it's always good to save first before you start doing this or for that matter, before you start doing any major modification to your map so that you can always revert back and load to a previous save. But I like to fill it in carefully with trees at first, not going too crazy. And then once I've got a decent covering all over the map, then you can go back in and fill in some of the gaps, make the trees a little bit thicker and go from there. But again, always a good idea to save before you do any modification like this, because if you have your brush strength up too high, you might paint a bunch of trees on one half of the map and then not have enough for the other side. You can always right click on the brush to delete trees, but a slow and cautious approach is usually easier that way. You don't have to go repeat steps or start from scratch. So save every once in a while and save yourself the headache. With our trees out of the way, now we can determine a couple spots for ground resources in the form of ore, oil, and farming. Now, I mentioned before, but this map is not really going to be focused on ore or oil. It's just not what the area is about, but for those that want to build a little bit of everything into the map, I've thrown a couple ore pockets and a couple oil pockets off by the seacoast. Now for farming, I've used some of the larger clearings of the map as possible farm area. Though keep in mind the large clearing to the left of the starting tile is actually where Pease Air Force Base would be in real life. So though I've made that possible for you to have a very large farmland there, that's not really the intent of the area and it's mostly going to be covered up by uh, cargo, international airport, and shipping areas. But those are some of the basics of resource management, something to definitely include in maps, though it's not required, but it's nice to give everybody an opportunity to build the type of industry that they would like to do on your map, even if it wasn't the focus of the original area that we're copying. Another thing that I'll iterate a couple times in this map making series is that do keep in mind if you wanna make this accessible to people that are playing without mods, or without the DLC, there's a couple considerations. If you're playing without mods, you only have nine tiles by default. So try and give a little bit of everything in the nine squares that are surrounding the center starting area. You can change the start tile for any given map, but it starts in that very center tile by default. So for people that don't have the most powerful computers, if you give them a little bit of everything in that immediate area surrounding the start, everyone will be able to take advantage of those. On a similar note regarding the DLC, you can use DLC objects like mass transit highways and things like that when creating your maps, 
but if you'd like to make it accessible to as much of the community as possible, you may not want to include those things. You can always upgrade or downgrade roads later, but if you use all the default built-in assets like trees and roads, it means more people will be able to play your map without having to hunt down different assets and mods to be able to take advantage of those things. But we're almost finished this map, so stay tuned for one more episode where we'll cover the rest of the connections we didn't do yet in the form of air, shipping, and rail. Once the map's complete, I'm going to have to do some digging for some assets in the form of New England townhouses, row houses, and other stuff that would be appropriate for a New England town. But I'll give you some behind the scenes on my hunt for all those different assets and maybe talk about how we can build things like custom collections. And I'll publish that to the workshop as well for those looking to follow along at home. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, likes, comments, and shares all help the channel a lot and are greatly appreciated. If you're new here, subscribe for more in this and other series, and consider hitting the bell to get notifications so you don't miss any updates. Follow me on Twitter and join the Discord if you want to get involved in the discussion. But until the next one, this is Move the Mouse, signing off.